Not having your suite legalized could bring a lot of liabilities to one of your biggest investments. And in this video, we're gonna cover how to legalize your suite. If you're thinking about legalizing your Calgary's home suite or creating a new one, there are a lot of steps that go along with it and some very important things to consider. Whether you're aiming for an extra income or to accommodate a family member, understanding the ins and outs of this process is going to be key. We're gonna cover zoning, legal concerns, construction details, and considerations for resale and value. There are two different suite types that you need to know about, legal and illegal. These are suites that were constructed with proper permits and they meet all rules and regulations at the time of construction and meet any current safety requirements. They're also zoned or have been approved for a development permit, which allows for a relaxation of some of the rules. These suites were built illegally or without the required permits and may not meet zoning requirements. These were probably the most common for a very long time in Calgary, but as the city has expanded and made it a lot easier to suite your home, the online resources are pretty straightforward to navigate and you're seeing the majority of the suites now go legal. The big risk with illegal suites is the fact that they could get shut down at any time by the city and often they don't meet basic safety requirements. Zoning is your first step on the path to a legal secondary suite. It determines what you can build and where. Calgary is divided into different zones, each with its own set of rules. You need to make sure that your property is zoned appropriately for a secondary suite, which in Calgary terms could be either a basement suite, a garden suite, or a backyard suite. Back in September, Calgary City Council members approved a long awaited housing strategy, which includes a plan for reducing red tape through blanket rezoning of residential districts to allow for more housing types. The proposal for blanket rezoning to RCG in Calgary still requires public engagement and city council deliberation before any changes could come into effect. More than 60% of residential properties in Calgary are zoned to only allow single family homes as a default. This recommendation now asks to change the default zoning to RCG, which would allow for secondary suites reducing wait times and the process of potentially needing to rezone. As of today, if you're purchasing a home that does not meet the zoning for a suite, and secondary suites are listed as a discretionary in your district or your design or location does not meet the land use bylaw specifications, you will also require planning approval or a development permit. The development permit is not guaranteed, so this is an important step before even writing on a home or even beginning any work. Depending on your current zoning, the scope of work can change. The critical components that need to be identified on a site plan are parking and ensuring that there's at least one parking stall on the parcel per unit and no, street parking does not count. Secondary suite amenity space is an outdoor space designed for the tenants, active or passive recreational use. The area must be shown on the site plan drawing and the amenity space must be at least 81 square feet with no side smaller than five feet. Suites that are entirely located in the basement do not have a maximum floor area and suites that are not entirely located in the basement have a maximum suite floor area of 100 square meters or about 1,076 square feet. Development permit timelines may vary based off of the proposed complexity, the degree of impact on the surrounding community, and when public comments are submitted to your file manager. Discretionary development permits will take additional processing time and they generally require additional circulations as well as an advertising and appeal period. Before applying, I suggest speaking to your neighbors and community members about your development ideas. A temporary sign may be placed on your property to let the neighbors and nearby business know about your application. The public has 21 days to appeal the decision, but with enough notice and proper communication, you will hopefully not have this happen to you. To legalize an existing secondary suite, you're going to need a building permit if your existing basement suite or mother-in-law suite includes both a bathroom and cooking facility in the unit. Even if you're not planning on renting out the unit, you still have to apply for the necessary secondary suite permits. Your suite is accessible from the outside without passing through the main dwelling unit, but a shared stairwell is acceptable, but each unit must have its own private entrance. And your suite was built prior to March 12th, 2018. If you are building a new suite, you're going to need a building permit and a separate electrical and plumbing permit. Here are the major building code considerations to note when you're designing your suite. For more details and specific measurements, I've provided a direct link to the City of Calgary's website where all the information can be located. Bedrooms must have at least one window that can function as an exit in case of an emergency. There are minimum window size requirements as well as the window well requirements and 
Typically a window installed, I've seen ranges anywhere from $2,500 to $3,000, which includes cutting the concrete, adding the window, the well itself, uh, and also the permits. Keep in mind that you're not always able to add a window on whatever side you'd like. You might be encroaching onto another neighbor's lot, or you might need to make other exterior modifications prior to installing that window. Also consider structural integrity when creating new openings for egress windows or doors. Sometimes you may need to consult with an engineer to make sure that you aren't making modifications that could be dangerous. This is one of the most important ones. The installation of smoke alarms in each bedroom and common area have to be interconnected. So if you activate one, it triggers all of them. Modern homes should all have smoke detectors interconnected, but I've been to a lot of mature homes where they aren't. Carbon monoxide alarms also need to be installed interconnected and within the vicinity of the bedrooms. A smoke type barrier between the suite and the primary residence, often half inch drywall, needs to be installed and a furnace room separate from the rest of the building by the appropriate fire rating construction. You might be able to utilize a sprinkler system, which could be an option to explore in some cases. Heating can be a tough one, especially for pre-existing suites. For pre-existing secondary suites, the use of a single heating and ventilation system to serve both the main dwelling and the secondary suite is acceptable under the Alberta Fire Code. For new suites, especially when you're looking at new homes, you're typically going to see two different furnaces, but this can get costly, so you're also able to get electric heaters. If your basement's undeveloped, it would be relatively easy just to run the new wires and have them installed. Installing a backfill prevention device on the main sewer line can sometimes get tricky depending on the location of the drain and where where they can install it. A backfill preventer is essentially a one-way flap that only allows sewage out, but should there be a backup from the city or a blockage in your line, it won't allow it back into the home. This is one that can get costly, but for a peace of mind and for insurance, it's worth it. Cost is always gonna be a factor, especially when you're getting a lot of this work done. So whether it's a new suite or an existing one, consider doing other items that will increase the value of the home and livability of the suite. Soundproofing and insulation is always a great one. Having less noise transmission always decreases complaints and increases privacy. Making sure that you have enough capacity to operate the suite is another one that's always overlooked. The first one is understanding the condition of your sewer line and just making sure that it can handle that extra capacity. The second one is a lot of the new suited homes come with a 200 amp service, but the majority of the homes in Calgary are 100 amps. When you add two electric ranges, two dryers, an AC, maybe a hot tub or an electric charger, you you could trip the main breaker. This one's less common, but there's still a lot of mature homes like inner city bungalows that have 60 amp services. And I've seen plenty of suites in Calgary where the electrical was not done professionally and that caused plenty of issues. Make sure that you consult with a professional that can do a load calculation so you can budget on potentially needing to upgrade your service. There are two types of inspections required for a secondary suite from the city and that's the rough in or framing inspection and the final inspection. At rough in inspection, you should have all the structural changes done, walls, framing, the proposed windows and exterior doors, HVAC, rough in for electrical, all completed. But for the final inspection, the construction should be completed and the suite should be ready for occupancy. A lot of homeowners and investors debate whether to legalize their suite or keep it original. As a landlord myself, I want to have a peace of mind that my tenants are safe and that I'm also legally covered should anything happen in the home. Legalizing a suite ensures that it meets safety code requirements, providing a safe living environment for renters. Legalizing your suite and registering it on the suite registry also means that you can't get shut down. There are countless stories of neighbors and tenants complaining and having suites shut down, which can be costly if you're depending on that rent to carry costs or to live in your current home. Lastly, homeowners can benefit financially by legally suiting their home. It helps with resale because it allows buyers to use market rents to get approved for more home and also takes a lot more risks away from buying that home because it's been inspected and approved. If you're purchasing a new home, most builders are gonna likely charge around 60 to $90,000 for a suited basement. If you have any questions about suited homes or investment advice, feel free to reach out.